in order to become an organic farmer, you actually have to go through this 36 month process called transition. And there's a variety of different crops that you can go into transition. The, the challenge is there's minimal transition markets. My name is Bryce Rolbeck, a co-founder of AgriSecure and B&B Rolbeck Farms. Today we'll be exploring small grains in an organic rotation. Why do you use small grains? What's the benefits? And, and how do we go about the, the production of small grains? We feel at AgriSecure small grains are necessary to create a long-term sustainable organic rotation. And there's three key benefits we like to talk about is number one, weed management. Changing that rotation changes when weeds are growing and when they can be controlled. Execution and labor management at B&B Earlback Farms. We have a third to two thirds of our uh, planting and our combining or harvest windows are changed because we're not growing just corn and soybeans anymore. Then the biodiversity, bring new organisms and species of plants into that rotation creates benefits for the soil, as well as allows opportunities for you to do different things such as fall planting alfalfa. When considering small grains, we also have factors that we like to look at for specifically your farm. And those three factors are regional viability of which small grain to grow, uh, the economics, uh, and the disease factors. So which crops are viable in your region? Is it uh, oats? Is it barley? Is it wheat? Or is it rye? Each one of those has regions that they, they grow better in than others. And so figuring out what region that yours grows in, the farther north you go, oats seems to do better. The farther south you go, uh, they seem to do worse. So really figuring out that regional viability. Uh, what are the markets in that area? What, where can I deliver? Understanding that is very important. Then understanding the economics behind small grains. What, what, uh, what is the market price uh, for that small grain and what is my yield? And then the, the most important part is disease factors. What does my region uh, provide for weather and when my small grains flower and what diseases can I possibly get and what will those diseases affect uh, for my marketability? So those are three factors that we highly suggest understanding, being able to, to identify and manage around. Barley is a good transition crop because we, we can plant it and we're not managing it. We're focusing on our organic crops and there's a good market for it. And we are able to keep the weeds down and not have new weed pressure throughout this year and for following years when it comes into organic. And the reason why organic uh, or barley is a good transition crop is that from an agronomic perspective, it does a fantastic job at weed management. And if you took a, a look low to the surface here, you see there's not a lot of weeds growing, and if they are, they're very small and weak. And so just like rye that we have a field over back behind me, it's the same effect. The small grain gets growing early, and it shades out the weeds and has a synergistic effect to keep those weeds down. You're gonna have a much better opportunity to really have a clean field because you had a controlled growing crop that covered each and every inch of your field the season prior. So if you can have a solid seeded field of something you actually put in there, you're gonna probably set yourself up for a better, better season the year after. Barley is a spring seeded crop, rye is a winter crop. And when we look at the weed control, rye, obviously, uh, rye has a better effect in weed control, but barley is a close second. You're not gonna see a huge difference in the field for the most part between weed controls. Different crops of oats and spring wheat that you see a little bit more problem with weed control where barley seems to have that effect that it, it canopies quicker, it, it does something in the soil that uh, uh, depletes weed pressure in it. Just like rye is even more effective because it has that early start from getting planted in the fall, getting an early spring growth, uh, we still see the same effect in barley. If we're looking at a crop year of barley, we, we are looking again at planting around April 1st as early as possible. I err on the side of risk and plant earlier uh, if the weather's fit and the soil's fit. So we're planting that April 1st, early March in West Central Iowa. We put it in with a seven and a half inch drill at 96 to 120 pounds. We come, by, we come through and drill it. Uh, and then we come back and in that May 1st to May 15th time frame, we we're looking at doing a fungicide if need be. We did fungicide this field with Procidic. 
May 25th timeframe because we had real issues last year. We we're being proactive on our small grains this year and we put that down. After that, we're looking at coming in and harvesting it with flex head soybean head. Probably in about a week and a half, two weeks here, we'll come in and we'll drag cut it through here and take it to market. One of the other aspects we have to take in is where do we market all these crops? And specifically, we'll hone in on the small grains, barley and rye. Uh, rye is a much smaller market. Uh, we go to some specially niche markets. So rye is not something we advise at AgriSecure to just go out and do. You have to have a plan and a way to execute on that, not only on the operations, but also on the marketing side of it. Uh, barley is a little bit wider market. You can feed it to cattle, it has good value. And so thinking about different options on barley, whether it's cattle feed or it goes into beer, if you're in one of those regions, there, there's a wide variety of markets. It, it is comparable to corn and, and feed value on a certain level. It's not the same, but it, it can be fed to cattle and be effective. There's really a lot of alternatives. You need to um, identify the economics. Transition is difficult, and that's um, one thing to really look at your management, the economics, and what your soil needs in order to put the most fruitful plan together. If we look at uh, the economics, which is the most important part of farming, because we still have to make money through all this, uh, we are not fo focusing so much on being widely profitable on this, this crop. But if we look at the, the economics, we are spending about $50 on seed. Uh, we're spending about $100 on farm equipment. Uh, that means every pass through the field, we're accounting for time and the, the usage of that farm equipment. We're figuring in about $300 rent. And so we're looking at around a 500 or $450 an acre cost to grow barley with our rent, uh, with the straw coming in and the, the barley coming in, we're looking at 60, 65, 70 bushels of barley in that three and a half to four dollar range, uh, two and a half to four dollar range, depending on the time of year. So we're looking at a total income around that 400, 450, might drive down to 350 if, we're, if we have a bad year with barley. But again, we look at it as a whole economic picture of our farm that, yes, we can make up $100 an acre by doing better management on our organic ground or alfalfa or peas and canola. This is here to make sure we don't have to manage it. And it's to make sure that we don't have issues that are going to affect us not this year, but the two, three, four, five years down the road. So if we look at the economics of small grains and the field budgets, we have oats, barley, wheat, and rye. As we can see at the bottom there, the total cost of production does not change drastically through each of these crops. So picking the, the crop for your region is one of the most important aspects and understanding what are yield limitations, where's your low, where's your high, where's your disease factor. And so we look at the, the small grains and we view them as a long-term investment for sustainable long-term organic rotation. And we think about three things that need to go right during those is the planning, the execution, and the marketing. Uh, that's from the farmer's side. Very important to put the time and effort into figuring that out and understanding what it's going to take to raise a successful small grain. A lot of people that we worked with when we started with them, producers throughout the Midwest and even the United States, they had the one year mentality. That's the conventional farmer mentality and there's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't fit in an organic mindset. You have to think over five years and being able to capture that data to understand how this all fits together. So losing $100 an acre on barley during transition is a win for us. I can make it up on my corn by having better management. That's how we justify it. And the only way we can is by really understanding the numbers and understanding our management and, and levels and how that fits together in the, the puzzle of farming. One of the things that we really focus in on with a lot of our new customers who are just getting started with organics is thinking about transition as a three-legged stool. So we work at balancing three elements to make sure that transition goes well for you, and that's agronomy, so what's happening in the soil and the field from a weed perspective, economics, and field management. From a management perspective, during transition, you're learning how to do organic farming for the first time, and a field like barley requires very little field work. So you can focus, if you do have some transition corn, you can focus really on learning your craft in the high value crops during that time period and just make sure the barley takes care of itself. And then economically, while the barley is not gonna be a fantastic crop from a short term economic perspective, it's gonna set you up for success in your first, uh, your first organic year by minimizing weeds and making sure that agronomically you're ready to grow a really good field of corn.